Hello and welcome back to the fish locker. Out on the bank today. We're out on an estuary mark, quite local to me. I've never fished this before from the shore. I've fished it just down the way in the boat. Um, we're fishing a flooding tide. It's heading in this direction. And I was a bit late. I was a bit late getting down to the mark. Um, it was it was a bit further on foot than I expected. I wanted to get down here about an hour after low water and instead I'm down here about two hours after low water. Now I've got the rods set up, you can see behind me. I'd intended on fishing two rods on the bottom with um, with like ragworm and lugworm for flounders and scully bass. And uh, bringing like a little lure rod that I've got and chucking, um, chucking like a little lure around. It wasn't until I went to go and set up that I realised that I'd actually brought the wrong tip section for that rod. And I'm about three mile away to the van so I'm not going back for it I've just had to um, just had to do my best and I've actually taped the top section of the other rod onto this and I've just chucked like a little a little rolling lead a little hook length and a, a ragworm just in close just to just to see if there's anything rooting about around my feet um, I'm fishing Wessex rigs at distance well, I say at distance the, the one on the left is about 40, 40 yards out and the big rods about 60 yards out into the channel. And all I'm waiting for is a take. Now um, it's quite important to keep your rods relatively low because the fish that I'm after are on the bottom. So you'll notice that I haven't got my rods stood straight up, they're almost almost flat down and I've left a little bit of slack in the line. Now that will still show a bite, you'll still register a bite, but it means that your lines aren't going straight to your lead, they're almost like sagging. That's a plan. Um, as I come in and bait change I'll show you the rigs that I'm using but it's just the standard Wessex rigs. I've, uh, I'll put a link in and show you my video of how to make them. And any luck we'll get to show you a fish. Yeah, you can see. <clears throat> you see we're able to tape them together because it's two male-male connections. It means that I haven't got enough. I haven't got enough in the rod to throw a lure around and catch anything like that. But I've just rigged like a little bullet lead like that to just roll around with like a foot and a half a twelve-pound flow roll. And I think this is a one-o, a one-o specimen extra. And all I'm using is just a ragworm and you're just threading it up the hook like that. There you go. And like I say, I'm, I'm just chucking this out 10 15 yards to just see if there's like a flounder or something just rooting around, around in my feet. Just had a, I've only just cast this out and just had a nice take on it. Tip just hooped right round. And there's the target species. Lovely little flounder. See there, look. It was just taken on the bottom hook of a Wessex rig. Easy target, easy. Now I'm done. A lovely flounder. Be over a pound. Will it? That's why I like having detachable hook lengths as well. Now look. We'll get him unhooked and have a look at him. There we are. We've unhooked him. This is all the rig was.
it was just a Wessex rig which is a one up one down made from <laughs> recycled line that I got in one of my previous videos and the one up at the top I've got a little I don't know what's that a six inch hook length with a, a size I think it's a size four bait holder hook and on the bottom I've got a hook length of possibly a foot and a half a foot and a half with a uh, a 1 -oh Cox and Roll specimen extra and all I've done was I just hooked a few mag a few uh, ragworms like that now I've got I've got a little three ounce round lead on there just so it can move around a little bit and all I'd done was I'd just cast it out Uh, probably no more than 30 40 yards and all I've done is I've just set just set the rod tips quite low so that my baits are low to the low to the seabed unhooking them isn't always easy I learnt a really good trick from uh, from another YouTube um, YouTube fisherman Fisho, thank you very much for the tip. And all you do is when you swallow it real deep, you push your uh, your tweezers up underneath the gill and out of their mouth. Hold onto the line and pull it back down, which turns the hook and allows you to pull the hook out. We might have a fish on the other rod now. Bites are starting to pick up. Which would be great to get another, get a few more fish. Now um, I'll quickly get this flounder on the scales for you. I reckon he's, he's just over a pound. One point two. Try it twice and take an average. There you go. One point two one. So that's roughly one pound three ounce. Cracking when you get the target species, isn't it? Got a couple of photos of him going back. Oh, easy tiger. Now a little flounder friend. I don't know if you can see. He's actually got a louse sticking out the back of his gill. We're coming up to high water <clears throat> in about half an hour. Now uh, the crabs are just non-stop. I'm literally having to, like, uh, <laughs> I'm literally having to constantly cycle because by the time I've pulled one in and baited it and cast it out, I've got to pull the next one in and bait it and cast it out. The hooks are just coming in, completely stripped. Now I've actually just cast out. I don't know if you can see the middle rod. And it's just getting like a little knock on it. Now I have got a round lead on there, like a pear shaped lead, so it will move around a bit. And that's good for flounders, because flounders, um, they are they are pretty much sight hunters as well as scent hunters. That's why you use like a spoon, or you can use beads, or if you're fishing like a clean beach. I mean, this isn't this, this isn't like that because I've got that much bladder rack and seaweed and rocks around but if I was fishing fishing a, like a clean muddy area or a clean beach 
If you haven't had any bites in five minutes, give the reel two winds. Just put it back down again. That little bit of movement kicks up like a little bit of dirt or a little bit of sand. Can draw the fish in. And not only that, but if you've got a fish that's near your bait and it's watching it and it thinks, oh, I'll have that in a minute. If you move it ever so slightly, it thinks, oh no, it's going to get away, and it has it. So don't be surprised if, if you, when you sit it there, if you just give it like a little wind, or you just give it like a little pull, you'll get a take straight after. The crabs, the crabs are a problem. I think it's just because we've had such a mild winter so far. We need a bit of cold weather to come and, and kind of put them off. We're just coming up to the slack water part of, of the flood. It's just, just finished flooding, I think. And, um, I'm trying to take this opportunity to have a bite to eat. And this is probably, <laughs> this is probably cue of when I'm going to get a bite. It's always the same, isn't it? You pour yourself a drink or you get your sandwiches out. What rod goes. A couple of folks have been asking me, <laughs> asking me like what my what my favourite fishing sandwiches are and what I take on me. And mine's actually raspberry jam. Raspberry jam and chocolate digestives. Because the crabs are such a problem at the minute. One of the things that I've, I've tried to do to try and keep the baits down there just a little bit longer is the hook lengths on the bottom of my Wessex rigs. I've made them up like that now. And all these are, are they're just some little floating beads. And all you do is you just put a little stop knot just so it holds them just above the hook. And the theory of that is that as this sits on the bottom, these little beads just pop it up like that far so if this is the bottom they'll just be popped up just enough to keep them just off the bottom just away from the crabs and it's also quite good because it's in the eye line of flounders I mean flounders have got eyes on the top of the red haven't they if they're up on the bottom they can see something that's just up off the bottom like that and the same all I do all, I, all I've been doing is just thread up couple of ragworm. I throw the first one up and pop it out. Throw the second one in behind it. Obviously you can't do it with the absolute monstrous ones. You don't want like the snakes. You just want um, smaller ones are better. And it just rigged like that. And if I can show you real quick all it does is the beads just just pop it up off the bottom well it's not deep enough but these beads float can you see just holds it up off the bottom there you go yeah, look, just come in for a bait change and you can see this is what the normal hooks are like and this is what the ones on the floats are like so they're still getting to it but it's lasting longer. Now, every other time, this has been the only one that's got a little bit of bait left on it, and all the other ones are completely stripped. So you see, that's one way to try and combat the crabs. Well, that's it, I'm afraid. We've, uh, we've given it all the time that we can. We'll have to start making tracks back to the van now. <laughs> I've got like a two mile trek through the woods. Um, it's not a bad, not a bad session. Got the target species. He's got that flounder earlier on. And, uh, I would have liked a few more, but like I said, <clears throat> crabs are just still too thick on the ground. Need a bit of cold weather, and that'll put them off a bit. It's um, tried out a new mark. We've uh, definitely got this one in the book for for when it comes summertime next year. Well, this year. <coughs> Sorry, we'd. Um, Hopefully there's been some hints and some tips in here for you. I've um, I've mixed it up a little bit. It wasn't it wasn't fishing as I wanted it to, so I had to change the rig slightly by putting them flotation beads on. Um, 
I hope that you've enjoyed watching. Sorry, I'm still watching. I'm watching that rod on the left-hand side because it's just ever so slightly giving it some. That will be fantastic to finish on a fish. If you um, if you have any questions about today, or if you have any suggestions about what you want for another video, please let me know. In the same way that uh, go and have a look on the uh, Fish Locker Facebook page. Have a good one.